Hey, welcome back to the book of Exodus. We're in chapter 20 today, verses 18 to 21. Listen. All the people perceived the thunder and the lightning flashes and the sound of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they trembled and stood at a distance. Then they said to Moses, Speak to us yourself and we will listen, but let not God speak to us or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, for God has come in order to test you, in order that the fear of him may remain with you, so that you may not sin. So the people stood at a distance while Moses approached the thick cloud where God was. Okay, so let's think about this a little bit together. We just had the Ten Commandments, and now we have this sort of summary. At the beginning, we had the thunder, the lightning, the fire from heaven, and the people were standing there and uh, getting kind of uh, excited and concerned and fearful because of the extraordinary physical manifestation of God's presence here. After the ten, here's that was the front bracket. Here's the closing bracket. And so we have thunder, lightning, and fire, and right, all this again. So that sort of encompasses the ten, the big ten. There they are. We just talked about them. But now we see the reaction here, and we see what happens next. So um, they want Moses to be their mediator. You know, Moses is the prophet who Jesus is like. You know, there will be one after Moses uh, like him, and that's going to be Jesus. In many ways, Jesus and Moses are different, but in certain ways, they certainly are, are very similar. And here it is, Moses is acting in some measure here as a mediator between God. He goes up the mountain, he comes down the mountain, up the mountain, down the mountain, taking the words of the covenant back and forth to the people, etc. And so here we have another way in which Moses is like Jesus because Moses is acting in some sense here as a mediator between them and God. And the people want it that way. You go talk to God, you bring back his word to us. This kind of firmly establishes Moses as the big leader. Moses is, is our leader beyond dispute. He's going to bring the word of God to us, etc. So here, this is the, the final absolute, you know, Moses is the ruler for now. Moses is the leader for now. Now, the main thing I want to talk about here today on this is this business about testing and fear and sin. This is, uh, this is really important. So God gives them his Ten Commandment rules. And now, you know, we've kind of finished that spot. And so here we're kind of looking at the reaction. And Moses tells them part of the reason. Part of the reason God gives us those, those rules is what? God is testing us. God is putting us to the test, and there's a validity to that. Of course, you test something before you before you put your weight on something. You kind of test it out. You make sure it can hold your weight. Okay, so we have uh, this desire. He says, don't be afraid. It's interesting in this verse, isn't it? Do not be afraid, for God has come in order to test you in order that the fear of him may be may remain with you so that you may not sin. So don't be afraid, and yet here it goes on to say, the fear of God should be upon you. There's a respect and an awe that we should have when we're dealing with God, when we're addressing God. There's, it's, this is helpful. This is why he came down with fire and thunder and lightning and, and earthquakes and so on, right? He's, he's trying to get our attention, let us know. Uh, you are, uh, we are very small. He is very big. He is the infinite God. He's the creator. We're the creature. Uh, there is something about that we should not lose sight of, right? So uh, remember, he is the law giver and we are the law receiver. So he doesn't want us to fear, but he also wants us to respect him and realize that we're, we're, we're moral creatures in a moral universe, his moral universe. And so when he tells us what, how the moral lay of the land is, our response is, yes, sir. Our response is, yes, I'm going to live that way. I'm going to echo your morality. I'm, I'm linked to you in this way. And notice that he says he's telling us, he's giving us his commandments so that we will not sin. So we have to think that anything that's contrary to the Ten Commandments we've just looked at is, is, is in some measure, in some way, is sin. So not remembering the Sabbath, the Fourth Commandment, not remembering that and keeping it holy, that's a sin. Uh, so not honoring the Fifth Commandment, not honoring our father and mother. Well, that doesn't sound like it's a sin issue, but yes, it is. Yes, it is. If we don't honor, if you don't honor your father and mother, you are engaged in sin. You are acting in contradiction to God's character. You're acting in contradiction to what he has laid down as universal moral imperatives here that we should do, okay, and things that we should not do. So 
God doesn't give us the law to destroy us. He doesn't give us the law so that we'll tremble and fear, but he wants us to know what he's like and he wants us to know what he wants us to be like. He wants us to know what it's like to be a, the blessing that he wants us to be to the world. So consequently, he doesn't want us to sin and have all the uh, things that come with sinning. And so here we have the great blessing of his law laid out for us and he has tested the people so that they will not sin. So there you have an interesting sort of, uh, we had the preamble of the Ten Commandments and now we have sort of the post, the post ramble, uh, the post angle here and now we're kind of getting, we finished it and we still see uh, there's good purposes, there's positive purposes in God giving us this. So a lot of that you've heard about, oh, be careful about the law, we're not saved by keeping the law. No, we're not, but guess what? The law is a good thing. God is holy, just, and good, and so on. His law is described using the same terms, holy, just, and good. His law is good for you. His law is good for me. So here the people have heard his law, and they are uh, to respect and revere him. He is God. You and I are not. All right, so we'll leave it there and come back tomorrow morning for the next section. But let's make sure that whatever we do in following Jesus, that we are getting the benefits he has for us, especially benefits to keep us from sinning. See you tomorrow morning.